Hey, hey, Tony Gadget here, popping in. Now, I want to talk about something because one thing I noticed as I'm looking at the letters from Talks with Tony, which I'm not going to go through those right now because another thing I, I realize it, you know, some of them getting real deep and it get into stuff that's for therapy, not for, you know, these type of letters. But one thing I noticed, uh, one young lady, you know, she sent in some pictures and she lives in Hawaii. And another young lady sent in some pictures. And when I look at people's pictures as a man, for one, I've been married 15 years. So my taste may be different in the sense of being able to see what a single man sees. You know, I see a woman and it's been said that I may give a person too much credit. You know, I may not be as critical. And it could be just because I'm married. So I've had to turn that side of me off. But maybe a single man looks at it totally different. Now, here's the thing, which is is very weird. And I and I can ask the question, but it's really like a rhetorical question. And that is, is it fair that women are judged so heavily by their body? But yet we ask women not to be so superficial when looking at a man. And, it, and that really hit me. That hit me. I say, you know what? <laughs> it's kind of like what goes around comes around. So on one hand, you know, I'm always teaching. I'm always teaching women. And when I teach men, I keep it the same way. But when I'm talking to women, I let women know how men are and how men think. But I'm always telling women, hey, look, take the numbers off of your list, the height, the weight the income and look at his character focus on the man's character and then when i talk to men i will say hey it's not all about looks like don't try to go for the woman that you could never get or the woman who appears to be perfect because it's all that's gonna fade anyways but what i'm realizing is that is not anywhere near the common approach to dating because when i see so many women single i know it's a lot of different reasons but one of the you know what and i can't even say one of the main reasons is how a woman carries her body how she treats her body because it's a whole lot of women with a what you would say a perfect body you understand that you know perfect not in the literal sense but meaning you know no stomach nice thighs nice butt nice you know whatever what you may consider perfect or what the world may deem acceptable or ideal it's a whole lot of women like that who are single but then at the same time, I see a lot of women who they don't try to fit into society standards of the body and they're married. And a lot of them are married to everyday men, you know, regular men, men who actually do like women. It's not just a cover up. Now it's a, it's a good amount of women who may be outside of the beauty constructs of your country and be married, but unfortunately their man is using them as a cover-up, which that may only be discovered through text messages or something like that, which that, have, that has come across my desk several times where women have found their man, you know, dealing with... Uh, another man but the the other man dresses and talks and carries themselves like a woman but still has their man parts and so i've heard of that a lot but when you look at it it's kind of like man what is the factor the single factor to keeping someone single and that is what's because it's no like hey if you have a nice body, you're going to get a husband or a wife. 
So it is we can't just say to men and women, as coaches, if you take care of your body, you're gonna meet who you wanna meet. Because we found that's not always true. We can't say, hey, if you just take care of your mind, you read a lot of books, you're smart, you get degrees, that you're going to meet the love of your life. Because we we found that's not always true. And we can't say, hey, you got to look like this and fit inside of this box and you're going to meet the love of your life because that's not true. So when I look at the difference and I see a lot of different singles, it's, it's a couple things and well, it's quite a few things, but I'm going to go through some of the most common ones so that if you're a single person, you can see, well, what am I closest to? Like, which one of these is closest to why maybe I may be single? And if I don't get to it, remember protective custody, meaning you could be doing everything right and it's just not your time. Just God does not have that for you right now because of something else you're supposed to be doing, something else you're working on, something else you're working through, and it's just not the time. But on some of these other areas, if it applies to you, then sit with it. Don't be offended by it, but sit with it, look internally, and start to do the work. So one of the, and, and we'll go on the superficial side, on the superficial side, you cannot do anything about your height. You can't add or take away when it comes to height. So that's that. But then you have your look. So you can do something about your look, meaning are you stuck in your ways? Do you put your best foot forward? Like, do you work on yourself and take care of yourself to the best of your ability. And what I mean by that is, do you have a hair care routine? So as a man, going to get a haircut every week or going to get your hair done every week, if you get braids or whatever. Now, if it's twists or locks or something, then that may be a little different. But do you have a hair care regimen? Do you have a skincare regimen? So you see the light shining in my face, but I have a three-step, sometimes four-step skincare regimen. As a married man, as a single man, single woman, it all it has to be required. And all this, all that is, is a face wash, and then it's like a serum, like a hyaluronic acid, and then it's a moisturizer. And then you may have specialized creams that's like for your under eye, you know, for your wrinkle, things of that nature. And so having a skincare routine, do you have a mouth care routine? Brushing your teeth in the morning, brushing your teeth at night, and then going to get regular dentist visits every six months for your cavities, for your cleaning. Do you have a, a mouth care routine? What about the way you dress? Do you take and stay up on the latest fashion? Meaning the look for your body, for your complexion, for your height, weight, and like having a subscription to a magazine, to a website to see what fashion is out. This doesn't mean expensive stuff. But do if you shop at Target, if you shop at Charlotte Roos, if you shop at Hot Tropics, if you shop at H and M and Rue Twenty One and Forever Twenty One, do you go in there every couple weeks to see if you need a new shirt, need new pants? Zara, Zara is a good one if um you know if you want to be fashionable but yet still at a reasonable budget. Zara is a great store and I'm pretty sure it's others out there like it. But they always on the cutting edge of the fashion. And that presentation matters. You want to be in a Tiffany's box or you want to be presented in a brown bag. 
we all going to choose to be put in the Tiffany's box. The presentation looks better. So you got to make sure that you're still not dressing the way you dressed in the early 2000s, in the late 1990s. And that's how a lot of people do. You got to make sure that your closet is not a copy of your auntie closet, your uncle closet, who your mama closet, your daddy closet. You got to make sure that you're not still dressing like you dressed 15, 10 years ago. And that's one thing I noticed. I noticed that a lot with single people is just they could be making good money. They could be whatever degree holders. But the other serious singles are on top of that stuff. And you have this great person who just so chill that they're being overlooked because they're not really into fashion. And listen. You know, I know we want to be stuck in our ways, but if you want your life to change, you want to go from single to happily married, you got to get out your own way. You got to get out of your ways and you got to do the work that you need to do, regardless of how uncomfortable it may be. You got to make the uncomfortable comfortable, meaning for the longest, I brush my teeth once a day. But being with my wife, she taught me that you're supposed to brush your teeth twice a day. That wasn't taught to me growing up. And so I had to get out of my own way, get uncomfortable. My sons, their hygiene, and she unforgiving with it, but she teaching them. And I realized that she got to teach them because it'd be stuff she don't even do. But she teaching them the right way. And I mean, we'd be out and be tired and everything they still got to brush their teeth regardless they still got to shower regardless it don't matter they and get out that shower still got the lotion head to toe i'm talking about from the the crown of their head to the sole of their feet they lotioning and it's every day no days miss unless she out of town and i'm like listen man you ain't got to do all that man go on get in the bed and that's just me breaking the rules. But I realized we have to get out of what we were taught growing up. And you got to really be intentional about this. Like, I see a woman and she'll just be like this right here. And just have that wig up there. And the wig just to be... And it just to be, and 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 the woman to be single as a dollar bill, and the wig just be, and I'm like, listen, it's no man that's gonna want you with that wig doing that. You have got to get that under control. You have got to. Go get you a quality wig that look like it is your hair. And that's going to get up there and it's going to stay still. It's not going to be moving like that and, and crooked. That part, that, that middle part got to be in the middle. You cannot have no wig to wear. That part get over here to the side to a little bit. It's like, come on. And listen, you got to wash that wig and you got to blow dry or comb the hair. Like you got to take care of that wig hair. You cannot be walking around with that wig hair clumped up, you know, clumped up and wow. Like get that, take that wig off and, and take you something through it. Take you something through it and get that hair the way it need to be now. Because you going out and you presenting yourself. And it's like, listen, 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 we spending a hundred dollars a month on Applebee's two for 20, Chili's two for 20. If you know you need to, if, if you say, listen, I done had this smile, but I do not have Michael Strahan money. I do not have T.D. Jakes money. Did T.D. Jakes win and got his teeth fixed? 
I can't. I feel like I seen T J with his teeth fit, but I don't. I can't. I could be mistaken. Listen, braces is ninety nine dollars a month. It's a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice. I had I had braces in my thirties, and it was some days I couldn't afford that hundred and fifty dollars a month, and I had to skip that month. I just didn't go in because when I would go in, that's when you got, to, you got to pay. So I skipped the month. So it was six months in that process of having braces. I ain't, I ain't had that 150 that month. So I had to miss that month. So instead of having braces 24 months, I had braces 30 months. But I got them off, now I could smile. And I'm in a relationship. I'm taking. My wife was all right. But that made things even better just for our relationship. I could smile more. I could be more happy more exuberant. And so I say that to say, you got to love yourself on that level. You got to love yourself on that level. And $99 a month, make that sacrifice, you know, get them teeth put together. And, and when you go in there, there's a card called Care Credit. Apply for Care Credit. They understand a lot of people have credit issues and so they approve bad credit too. Apply for care credit, and that that could get you braces. Take care of your braces with that. Any other little treatments you need to get. So I done seen women and men get keloids removed at the dermatologist, get uh, moles removed. Like on the superficial side of things, become your best self. Enhance yourself. Because it's a lot of competition and this real, you know, if you want to be in a relationship and you want to procreate, you want to, or just even if you want to have kids, you want to just have companionship, become the best version of yourself. I'm not saying go get a facelift. I'm not saying go get plastic surgery. What I'm saying is enhance yourself reasonably and maintain yourself. Because it makes a difference. You want to put your best foot forward. And I'm married and I'm still trying to enhance myself. And this is what I mean. We come from certain things. So like, for example, I have a, a deep set wrinkle in my forehead. And that be, that is because when I was in middle school, I broke out. I had acne in middle school, right? And that's because I didn't wash my face because hygiene was not taught in my home. So I didn't really wash my face. I let the water hit it, but I wasn't actively washing my face until I broke out. Then I got noxema, Clearasil, and then eventually went to the derma dermatologist and he prescribed a panoxyl bar, P-A-N-O-X-Y-L, a panoxyl bar with 10% benzenoid in it or whatever that B word is. And that took off all my skin. So it turned my skin black to where I could peel it off. Everywhere, under my eye, over my eyelid, it took off a whole layer of skin. And up under that skin was new regenerated skin. And I never had bad acne like that again. I still get, you know, normal bumps just from clawed pores or whatever. But that panoxyl bar changed my life. And it was had to be prescribed. I think later they put it on the shelves. I don't see it no more though. But I would walk around because see, I would have bumps cross here. So to hide my bumps, I would do this. And you see, now I can't really, it ain't doing it. But my forehead would turn into like four big things. But now... I go with my wife and I get me a little Botox put in there. I get my little Botox put in there. And I'm being transparent with y'all because a lot of people beautify themselves and go to looking better and don't and want people to think they woke up like that. No. But I my wife did the study, realized this natural, you know, it dissolves. That's why you do it, you know, every six months or so, whatever. But it just help you with them wrinkles. It help you with that deep set. And see, I don't want to come on here and leave you in the dark. And my wife being there too. And so sometimes you look at beautiful people and we just assume that everybody just beautiful. 
And you know, and I ain't beautiful, but my wife beautiful. And you just assume she just naturally beautiful. And it's like, yeah, she got natural beauty, but she enhances her natural beauty. She go do a certain face treatment that they do the thing like a microcurrent, lifting you, you know, and she gonna do her YouTube one day. She told me with all this stuff that and teaching all this here stuff. But I remember she left there. I looked at our card. After she left there, that treatment was twenty two hundred dollars. I said, did they fly in a new face for you? What the world? They had Jesus come down and give you a facial? I'm like, my goodness. This what y'all spinning? And she said, she said to me, she said, listen, the white women that you see, they live in these places, getting these treatments. And so I said to say, now, yeah, that costs a lot of money. So you got to get a bag up. You got to get your bag up, but these are, and you got to find one that's five stars, five star. Do not go in. If they got four and a half, stay out of there. They need to have 4.9 and, and 4.8 at the least. If you got to drive three, four hours, but it's these, and it ain't just these fly by night med spas. Now nah. it's, it's, and they need to have more than a hundred reviews, but you go there and see what they offer. I went to one my wife told me about, and they put a, a they put a pad on your stomach, like a big pad, and it sent a uh like a it's a vibrate, like a oof, like a ultrasound shoo, on your stomach. It's called M Sculpt. M Sculpt similar check now. And what that's doing is it's strengthening your abdomen. But it also so it's like a like what Bruce Lee was doing years years ago but this high technology version is strengthening your abdomen and it's also strengthening my back i got i, I had a lo bad lower back i ain't feeling no back pain it's strengthening that core but with the strengthening of the core it also help you lose inches now you're supposed to be already moderate you know and, and you don't go there at the beginning of your weight loss journey, you get you get some weight off on you, and then it help you tone up. So it'll take you from, you know, that little pudge to some definition to where you can see a couple abs. And that service costs two fifty a treatment, or you can sign up for four for nine hundred dollars. That's expensive, but when you see this man, this woman at the beach with a four pack or a six pack. A lot of them doing that right there. A lot of them going and getting that M sculpt. Then they getting cool sculpting. And so I say that to say, your competition is working. And I know we, we try to be in this fantasy world of, oh, what's for me is for me. And I don't have to do anything for it. And it's just going to fall in my lap. No, that's not life. That's not reality. That's not life in any form. That's not life in the classroom. That ain't life in the workforce. You have to spend money. You have to put in work and you have to go to the next level. How much did a college degree cost? Some of y'all got scholarships, but what you had to do to get a scholarship, go get the knowledge and go find the scholarship. I know one young lady, she had her bachelor's paid for, her master's paid for, and I think her doctorate paid for all off scholarship, but she had to do the research on Google and she had to find them scholarships and write them essays and apply for them and get them. You got to do work. So in your looks, in your body, you have got to do work. And especially with minorities, because we come from nothing in America, we get so complacent in doing nothing and being nothing. And we get complacent in that. And we got to get out of that. You got to invest in yourself. So listen, if you don't, I'm not the type. I don't really like having a personal trainer. I don't like somebody standing over me, looking at me, breathing on me, telling me what to do and giving me incur fake encouragement. I don't like that. So what I do is I look at a workout on YouTube and I do that workout. I get an app and the app might be nine, ten dollars a month. 
and it have workouts. I do those workouts. So I keep the membership long enough to learn all of the workouts. And then I, you know, cancel the subscription. And then I will take and make the investment. So when you go to, and we're going to talk about the body. When you go to like Peloton, Peloton Semi Check. When you go to Peloton and Nordic Track, I just ordered a, a Nordic Track treadmill. They finance you. They'll finance you. Now, when I got my Nordic Track, my credit was bad, so I had to go and pay for it in full. But when I got my Peloton bike, my credit score was good, and I financed it for $40 a month or something like that. And so there's no excuse. You can have you a Peloton bike. Now, I'm going to tell you, that Peloton bike going to have your booty hurting. When I tell you your booty be hurt, I can't even fool with that Peloton. My booty be hurt so bad. I'm like, my goodness. I must ain't got enough cushion. Man, that Peloton have you feel like you got a different kind of hemorrhoids. I'm like, y'all need to do something about this. This seat need to be different because y'all tripping. This thing need to feel like a couch on here. You want me on here riding this long with your heart behind a the seat. Then, yeah, the pad is short, so whatever, and the pad is seat. Do what you got to do. But now it's another contraption called the mirror. Mirror semi check. I got that because I'm, I'm a sucker for ads. The ads that they show, ADS, my country accent. People be like, you a sucker for what? Thing I'm saying, the cuss word, ADS, advertisement, ads. I'm a sucker for ads, and I seen the mirror, and it looked like a mirror, and it hang on your wall, but it plug in, you turn it on, you connect it to your Wi-Fi, and it's live workouts. You got yogas in there. I don't do yoga. You got boxing. You got weightlifting. You got plyometrics, and it's live sessions, and it's recorded sessions. And that's like $40 a month. But the mirror costed $1,700 when I bought it. And I say that to say, right in your bedroom, living room, wherever, you could be working out every day. And if you put in 30 minutes a day, you're going to lose that weight. You're going to tone up your body. Your body going to look better. Last night, me and my wife was watching NBA. Let me tell you what I did. I hopped down there, and you see how I got this little bit of chest on right here? See how I can make that thing? That's because of muscle in there. What I got down, I got down on the ground, uh, 25 push-ups, prison push-ups, 25 push-ups. Then laid on my back, 25 sit-ups, 25 sit-ups. Then got up, went to uh squat, boom. And I was squatting deep, too. I was going all the way down. Ah. And I come up, I squeeze them booty cheeks. I, I come up. Squeeze them booty cheeks in, getting them glutes lifted, 25 of those. Then boom, 25 more push-ups, 25 more sit-ups, 25 more. While I'm watching the NBA game, I'm sitting there doing a workout, getting that blood flowing. If you single, I'm doing this as a married man. If you single, you got to be doing this stuff. It ain't no excuses why you're not taking care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And that's what we're going to go to now. What we're talking about next, what I'm talking about. So that's that's your body and your looks and all of that. You single, you got to create a routine for yourself. Right now, my wife, she at the chiropractor. Getting, she get an hour massage at the chiropractor, and then she get an adjustment. It help her minimize migraines because she always get tight and crooked up. And so that's what I mean. Something simple as that. And then she got another um, thing later at the dermatologist. To where, like, if you have, like, a scar, they can take and uh, put a little Novocaine in there, take and cut it, cut that, flatten it, and then, boom, remove that scar. Let it heal, boom, and that scar gone. So that raised keloid or scar you got, if that giving you an insecurity, you ain't feeling good about it, then like little moles, little skin tags, you know, I have like sometimes you get it on your neck or something and you have different places. That give you a little insecurity in your swimsuit, go to the dermatologist. That might cost $50, $100 to get that little skin tag removed. You see, you have to be intentional about yourself 
and beautifying yourself, enhancing yourself, because that's going to boost your confidence. That's going to build your confidence. But it's so many people that just we don't make a big deal of ourselves, and that's how we raise. We raise to be less than. But then when you look at these other situation, races who feel like they own the country they live in, they doing the most. They take care of themselves to a whole nother level. When I went to get that thing for the strength in the core, that place is 11,000 square feet. You know how they can afford that? Because of all of the Caucasian people in there. I didn't see a single black person in that place. Except for a couple of the workers. It was all white men and women in this place getting the varicose veins, the spider veins. Or the, it's a, the place is a vein place, but they do all this other stuff. They getting all these treatments to enhance their life, enhance their body, enhance their look. It was only Caucasians in there. And so I say that to say, we got to learn some of that self-care. Now, if you're Caucasian, you, need, you might need to learn it too. But we got to learn some of that self-care and that self-love that's going to take care of yourself. And we got to stop making excuses. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not going to spend all that money. I'm not down. I ain't got the budget for all that. I ain't going to be doing all that. Uh, man, that's not necessary. That is superficial. That's not, I'm going to love me the way I love me. And I'm just going to love me. And if you can't love me for all of this here on me, then that's your loss. No, that's your loss. And you're going to remain lost. And you're going to stay lost. You have to work on you mind body and spirit that's why i call it the three b's brain brand body you got to work on you you got to work on you so listen to me now when it comes to the so the main thing that you see a lot of times is the superficial and the reason why i say that is because the first thing a person sees is you, how you present yourself. They don't see your personality. They don't see your mindset. They see how you present yourself. They see your body and they see the clothes that you have your body in. They see your skin and they, then they see your teeth and your hair and your nails and your shoes so if you are looking like who shot John and forgot to kill him, you will be overlooked. But if you looking like, whoa, the Lord took his time on you. Now you will get more opportunities to meet people. And it's going to benefit you in business as well. It's going to benefit you in other places. And you'll notice that people will say that. So it's like, listen, okay, God gave me my face, right? But it's up to me to cut my nose hairs. It's up to me to take care of my hair. It's up to me to take care of my face. It's up to me to keep a, a nice, you know, shave. It's up to me to clip my nails, to clean my nails. It's up to me to do that. So if you take everything that I am, right, everything that God made you, and you add bad, raggedy, wild hair, you add skin that's not being treated, you add nails that's not being clean, God could have made you so immaculate looking and you could blow it by not taking care of you. So that's what... You got to understand the first thing people going to see is you and how you present yourself. Spend money on you before you go spending money out to eat. Before you spending money on other people, spend money on you and take care of you. And so that's the first thing, the biggest thing. Now, on the other side of this is what I notice when I'm dealing with singles who are single. If it's not their packaging how they're presenting themselves, then it's their personality. 
and personality will coincide with mindset. So I see a lot of men and women who just are not rooted in reality. And in order to fix that, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get with about one to three people who know you and love you. And this could be a cousin, it could be a close friend, it could be a mother, father, and you're going to have to say to them, hey, I need some help. Tell me, what are my blind spots? What am I doing wrong? Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what are some personality flaws that I have? And be 100% honest with me. Speak to me, but speaking from a place of love. I'm not asking you to rip me a new one. I'm not asking you to beat me up with your words. I'm asking you to give me some feedback that will help me develop my personality. And you may hear things like, you overanalyze, you're an overthinker, you're an overanalyzer, but on top of that, you verbalize it. You let it come out your mouth and it makes you sound crazy. You are a conspiracy theorist. You don't believe anything. Everything is a conspiracy. The presidents and everybody getting this vaccination, but you feel like it is the mark of the beast because of something that you read on, on Google or something you watched on YouTube or a post you seen on Facebook or just your spiritual inclination make you distrust and disbelieve every single thing and everything is conspiracy with you and don't nobody want to be with no conspiracy theorists because that's like living in the psych ward. You may hear that. You may hear you got an attitude. You always coming with a disposition of what do you want now? Why are you bothering me? Instead of a smile and joy, you always come in like, what is it now? And that turns into a smart aleck response. You condescending, you say little stuff that's rude. And you low key take jabs at people and try to hurt people's feelings, but it's coming from you feeling insecure, you being hurt, and you want other people to feel a little bit of what you feel. You are way too in your head, way too insecure, way too shy. So you won't tell a joke, you won't laugh, you won't show teeth when you smile. And you just way too reserved and conserved, conservative and it's showing. You'll hear stuff like this. You play too much. Everything is a joke. You know, you put you put a dirty diaper in my purse and thought it was funny, but it was boo-boo and a little bit of boo-boo came out. You play too much. We was just telling jokes. And you squirt ketchup in my face. A little bit of the ketchup got in my wig. I still smell ketchup every time I put that wig on. And you play too much. Just certain stuff is not acceptable. And so you're going to hear stuff like this. When you hear this stuff, you got to sit with it. You got to analyze it. You can't hate your friend. You can't be mad. And sit with it and don't go to arguing. This is another person's perspective of you. Don't go to arguing. A lot of times when somebody tell us something about ourselves, we got a lot of excuses. And we want to do a lot of arguing about it. And you can't do that. You can't do that. You got to be able to sit and receive this and then work on your personality. Work on the things you do. So if you know you have a disposition to where you typically believe the negative or you immediately get negative if you know that's the case then what you want to take and do is say okay hmm that's the case right there so let me do something different let me do something different and let me take and not say what i'm thinking 
And so you 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 want to say something so bad. Ooh, you just you done bit your tongue. You you done chipped off piece of your tooth. You squeezing your teeth together so tight. You got a little twitch. You felt a little twitch. You you so ready to say say what you normally would say, but you done heard now from your friend that that's your personality flaw. So you just. Just, 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 your pause and just take your time. <sighs> okay, all right. And let me tell you, it's gonna bother you all day long. You know, you know what I'm telling you, because I done had to do this. That's how I know about this. It's gonna bother you all day long. And I remember in trying this here, I get through the whole day. At the end of the night, just run it off. Just run it at the end. Of, <sighs> and it's like you didn't hit your little powder. I ain't never had no powder now, but I'm just assuming that's how they be feeling out from what I've seen on the movies. But it's like you done, <sighs> you got your release because you you normally will say something or do something. And when you try to change, it's going to haunt you. It is going to haunt you. It's going to bother you. And so understand this, what I'm telling you now. Understand this, what I'm telling you. And work on this. Work on your personality. And so typically when I'm dealing with singles, it's normally their appearance, how they present themselves. It ain't, it ain't just natural, you know, it ain't what God did to them. It's what they did to themselves, how they present themselves, how they dress, how they carry themselves, how they take care of their body. It's, it's that right there that's kind of got people like, mm, nah, this person don't love themselves. And you're getting judged by that. So you got to make sure you're actively working on it. And then if it's not that, it's mindset and personality. It's the negative mindset. It's the rule. You know, it's it's the nasty. It's the condescending. It's the yeah, whatever. It's the pessimistic. It's those mindsets that block your blessings, that repel people from you instead of attracting people to you. It's those things that got to be done differently. And so we got to work on that. And even when you get married, you still got to work on this stuff. You, you don't change it. Don't change it for us for six months and attract the love of your life and then get them and they get comfortable with you. And then you go back to being who you want, who you were before. No, you got to really make a change. Got to really make a change. Like, and just get to that place to where you represent peace you bring peace, you're about peace, and that's just who you are. That's just who you are. So, hey, it's Tony Gaskins. I know I left some stuff out, but I just, and, and you know, don't take this the wrong way. I'm, 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 I realize this. This is what I realize. What I realize is that we are all being lied to. We're being told what we want to hear. And we live in a PC culture, which I don't know what PC stands for. I just hear people say it. And so we live in this in this society where we can't say what's real. And when you say what's real, then, oh, that's from South Park. Political correctness. Okay, yeah, I did know that. So we live in this PC culture to where if I say you are single because of your body. You're not taking care of your body. And so a serious single will not take you seriously. You have to get that under control. That is not politically correct. And now I am body shaming. And hey, you are single because of your teeth. You have got to, that is your smile. Your eyes are window to the soul where your teeth is a gate to the soul. So, or the front door to the soul. So you got to go take care of your teeth. My brother, my sister, and and that one little thing was like, well, I want somebody to love me and my teeth. I'm only missing eight of them on the side. And just because the other one got a little, that's a little bit of brown. So I, 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 I don't want the person who require 32 
white teeth. It, somebody need to be okay with these eight brown teeth because this ridiculous. That is superficial. And it's like, listen, you dealing with humans. You're not dealing with Jesus. You ain't date Jesus could love you who as as you are. But even Jesus ain't gonna be romantic with you. He might lay hands on your mouth and give you a whole new set just off of laying hands on your mouth. Jesus ain't finna be romantic with you. And Lord, forgive me. Bring your son in this. But that's what I'm trying to people we expecting humans to be like God. No. It's human. The same way you like what you like is the same way other humans like what they like. So you got to become likable. Personality. Listen, brain, get the knowledge. Learn. No. Brand. Do something. Be about something. Be working. Be building. Body. Be taking care of your face, your hair, your skin, your weight. You. Brain, brand, body, the three B's. I made that up, the three B's. You hear about it? Somebody else said, you know where they got it from. Brain, brand, body. Brains, brand, body. Brains, brand, body. Somebody give me a beat. Make me a song now. Brain, brand, body. And and it's all encompassing. Your brain, that's your, that's your knowledge. That's your wisdom. That's your understanding. That's your... That's your faith. That's your mental. That's you. That's your personality. Your brand. That's your job, your career, your entrepreneur ventures. That's your brand. That's that's your body, who you sleeping with. That's your reputation. That's your character. That's your brand. And your body. That's how you dress, who you sleeping with as well. And your weight, how you carry yourself. Your face, your skin, your hair, your nails. Listen, that's all encompassing. You the whole package. Boom. You bought that. So now, go on. Do what you need to do. And be that one. Be at your best. And listen, if you're going to go broke, if you're going to spend money, let that go broke on you. And let that inspire you to make more money. And listen, if you got this far, I'm not talking about no BBL. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't need no BBL. You need a GYM. You don't need no BBL. This is the list right here that we keeping up with this here list. We on number eight. So I got this thing to where in certain videos, I give you a number. I pull out this paper and I tell you number, the next number, and I give you a phrase and how it's written, and I tell you how to write it. And you write it down. We on number eight. And I go through that process. So if I ain't say number one on your paper, write it down. You got to watch all the videos to see them. When I get to the final number that I want to be at, for the first person that send that in, when I say, hey, we done, send this in. Send your list in. First person that sent it in to support at TonyGash.com. Some of y'all done sent it. It ain't time to send it in. It's not time to send it in. I mean, We're not at the end yet. I got a blessing for that person. I'm telling you, it's going to be a knock your sock off blessing too. It's going to be a knock your sock off blessing. But this is me reinforcing learning because we learning and we growing on these videos this ain't just entertainment this ain't about entertainment this is about learning and growing so i want to reward people who person who getting the lessons because it ain't gonna be people it ain't gonna be a whole bunch of people now i may come up with a second third fourth fifth place prize now some you know something a little more simple like pick a pick a course you want off tonyguysacademy.com but the first person now when i say send it in it ain't time to send it in so on number eight, we're going to put, we're going to put, stop making 
excuses with two exclamation marks. You got to pay attention. You got to have two exclamation marks at the end of it now. Because the prize going to be that good. You got, it got to be exact. You got to be exact. Stop making excuses. To find the other seven, you got to watch all the videos. You got to watch videos. <laughs> the lesson is do the work. Do the work. You can't skip. You can't skip the grind. You can't cheat the grind. Do y'all know you can't cheat the grind is my quote. It's viral now with the workout people. I'm the one made that quote up. I'm the one made that up, tweeted it. It went viral. Now everybody talking about don't cheat the grind, can't cheat the grind. That come from me. Just a little, just a little, just a little information for you. So, hey, so here's the thing. I'm going to be being real with you in love. I'm going to be being real with you in love, but I'm also transparent. I just told you I got Botox. Don't nobody tell that. You think I want to tell that? I, I, I wanted to lie when I went to say it. Because coming from my culture, that's embarrassing. That's that's embarrassing. That's shameful. That's coming from conspiracy theorists. Oh, you're killing yourself. That's probably a dangerous chemical. Because we just don't know no better. We don't know no better. Barely got through science class and think we know something about chemicals. Think we know something about ingredients. Be them barely got through science class, but it just be a pessimistic, untrusting mindset. When my wife got a master's in metal, master's degree in medical sciences, so I know she know more about the body and more about the chemicals that's in stuff that we put in our body than me. I know she understand the compound and the breakdown and the makeup of it. Because she actually got the information. She actually understand what this is. Just like with a vaccination, she actually understand the scientific side of it. Whereas people like myself, I might have took anatomy class and failed it, which don't have nothing to do with stuff, chemicals. But then we be knowing so much and really don't have knowledge. And so that's what I've got, what I got to confront. That's what I'm going to be speaking to is we got to get knowledge. We got to get real knowledge and we got to learn. Now, what I'm rec what I'm asking you, if you already done went and got your BBL, you done went under the knife, okay. But I'd rather you not do that. I'd rather you try Dr. GYM. Dr. Jim first. Dr. Healthy Eating first. And some squats and some walking. You could put a little bit of incline on a treadmill. Put it on three incline, three speed. Walk 30 minutes. If you get 10 minutes, okay, just do 10 for a couple weeks. Then you get to 20. Then get to 30. Then get to 45. Then get to an hour. Three incline, three speed. Just get you some walking in. Get that walking in. And get that healthy eating in. And then let's let's see. Now, see, I'm married, so I'm finna have Chick-fil-A for lunch. God bless you. So now, I ain't gonna be doing everything. I'm gonna be transparent about that, too. I'm not gonna be doing everything you're doing. We're not in the same position. So if you single, you, you don't need to be eating Chick-fil-A with me. Okay, you need to have your salad. So it's like, come on now. Come on now. So I'm not going to come on here and fake and pretend like I'm just perfect and living this, doing everything 100% right. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Because we're trying to get different results. You see what I'm saying? And, cause, and that's the problem with YouTube is 99.9% .9 of the people on YouTube is living a lie. They are living a lie. I'm a human. You Are you human? Okay. Now, are you being human? How perfect is your life? How, how amazing are your decisions and your choices? Okay, then. So why do you believe YouTubers? Why do you believe YouTubers? I see people on YouTube giving financial advice, but they showing you their life and their life is a complete representation of bad financial decisions. And I'm like, how are you giving financial advice and all your, you showing me 
depreciating things that I know costing you a fortune because I have those things. And that's why I'm not giving financial advice. Because if you buy those things, you're not fiscally wise. You need the hush. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what I mean. You, We got to stop believing everything we see. and But we got to get the knowledge for us that we need and implement that. So, hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. And we will talk soon. Uh, um, do me a favor now. On the, um, no, not yet. We'll talk soon. God bless you.